Now, there's a side note to this, which is that, so do you have any questions or comments about this before we go on? Okay, there's a side note to this, which is that for some time we've been talking about the force exerted on an object near the Earth's surface. And we've been calculating that in a very different way. As a matter of fact, we've been saying that it was equal to the mass of the object times this thing, little g, where little g was 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Well, if it's a gravitational force, it's a gravitational force. So you ought to be able to calculate in the same way. So where on Earth did that come from? So it's useful, actually, to see where that comes from. And here's the basic idea. We have, so here's the Earth, not drawn to scale. And here's some object that's some distance y above the Earth's surface. Say it's 10 meters. So here's here's a here's a a 10 kilogram here's an object that's that's 10 meters above the Earth's surface. Okay, so actually using this equation, we could calculate the gravitational force, and so the magnitude of the force on on the ball. This is the ball would be equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the ball times the mass of the Earth over, well, what distance is it? It is the center. And it turned, the reason it's to the center is it turns out that when you have an object that's, that's spherically symmetric, so a spherical object, even a, even a hollow shell like a ping pong ball, if it's of uniform density, you can work out the math. It's, it's just sort of a brute force integral, actually. And it turns out that if you have a uniform density hollow sphere of mass m, to an object outside it, it looks as it, it has exactly the same gravitational interaction as if Superman had come along and crush the entire sphere down to a tiny point at its center. And so if you consider the Earth has approximately uniform density. It's not actually uniform, and that's interesting, but approximately uniform density in the sense that the, the core is more dense than the crust, but the core is a set of shells, hollow shells of uniform density, and then the outside is a set of hollow, for, hollow shells of of essentially uniform, approximately uniform density. And so, in fact, the distance we're interested in for the gravitational interaction is indeed, as you say, the distance to the center of the Earth. So that would be uh, the radius of the Earth plus y squared. And if the ball were actually just sitting on the, the Earth, then that would be radius of the Earth plus 0 squared. But let's see what this number is going to look like. We're going to have g, mass of the ball, mass of the Earth. So let's look up what the radius of the Earth is, another of these constants that conveniently in the back cover of the textbook seems to be 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters. So we have 6.4 times 10 to the 6. So we have 6 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, plus 10 meters squared. And you can see that even if you work this out on your calculator, it's probably going to come out to be extremely close to six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that isn't going to make a much difference in the, in the magnitude of the force. So basically, we can say, well, 
as long as the distance from the Earth is extremely small compared to the radius of the Earth, then we can treat everything as if it's sitting right there. We can ignore this 10 meters. And that's interesting because then the gravitational force near the surface is going to be approximately g times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth squared times the mass of our object, the ball in this case. Okay, so when you, and what's the mass of the Earth? The mass of the Earth is, we were just looking at that, that's uh, 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And when we plug all these numbers in and calculate this quantity in parentheses, what do you think it comes out to? 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So that's, that's that number. Go home and calculate it to convince yourself that it's... And so that's approximate because we're saying we're approximating the location of everything near the surface of the Earth is, act is actually on the surface of the Earth. That's, that's pretty good until you get a ways up and then it stops being pretty good and then we shouldn't do it anymore. It turns out, interestingly enough, that, that if you go around with a device to measure this, uh, I mean, you could go around and you know, drop pennies and time them or something. Uh, there are more sophisticated ways of doing it. You will actually see variations due to the fact that the, or the density of the Earth is, in fact, not uniform. And it's one of the ways people prospect for minerals or oil because, in fact, um, substances of a different density actually cause small changes in, in this value near the surface of the Earth. And so it's those differences that actually allow people to, to to locate interesting deposits of things in the Earth. 